What's up everyone? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. So it's a uh, Saturday morning. I thought I would go over what's going on in the shop. Um, I'm going to be working on the shop car a little today and tomorrow. Getting some parts rolling in for it. So I want to get it somewhat roller capable. I uh, There's still a lot more trimming to do like on the back quarter panels. Um, but I'm going to try to at least get it make some forward progress um all that stuff probably just gonna unbolt back out when i'm painting and stuff so i can do it at any time um so i figured i'd do it this weekend when i have a little more time so past couple weeks has been crazy um i know it seems like we work on the shop car a lot more than customer cars and it's not the case um i got a wife and kid they uh you know gotta spend time with them so even though it seems like we work on it a lot, it's just easier to film it. We, uh, it's just easier to take the time to film it. Um, when you have customer cars, they're kind of on a deadline and we, uh, our shop rates hourly. So everything we do is hourly. So, um, it's not fair for them to, you know, take a bunch of time filming stuff. Um, I mean, we don't charge for what we film, but it's kind of hard to keep track of hours when we're constantly, you know, taking time to film it. So, like we did the door mounting, um, I had the tube notching stuff. That was both, um, you know, we don't charge the customer for that. So it kind of seems like we don't get that much work done, um, but we we are. We are getting a lot done. Um, got a pretty big backlog just because the year has been insane. Um, as you can see over here, we finally got tubing in. Um, kind of being a big uh, big issue right now the inch and a quarter stuff uh, has been out we've had a PO a purchase order open for um, a month and a half inch and five eighths has been a month uh, purchase order has been open so right now it's kind of hard to get tubing um, still keeping up with it. The prices really haven't changed, which I'm expecting that they're going to go up. So if you're going to get a cage kit, now would be the time to get it. Um, cause I just talked to the rep and it's, you know, three, it's at least a three month backlog of their tubing. So where we ordered from, they order 10,000 feet at a time of each size, I believe. Um, so I don't really know how it's going to pan out. The mills aren't really telling us what is going on. So we've had to go to a few other places to get tubing, but um, so nothing gets passed on to the customer. Um, if there's a huge jump, we're obviously gonna have to do something. Uh, but right now everything's gonna stay the same. So on Mike's car, uh, started well on some of the interior tin pieces. Um, I got working on that yesterday, uh, getting a gas pedal situated tried to use tried to kind of mock up the stock one but it's just not going to work with the big 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 block ford uh bell housing it's just uh it's big it's a big motor and it's not set forward very far um he's going to do a lot of no prep and street race type stuff so uh kind of wanted the weight further back uh, with this big of a motor in the back and then you know nothing much going in the rear it's tough to uh tough to get weight back so with that being so far back, kind of moved our gas pedal, uh, you know, a stock mounting location one, moved it back a little more. Um, so headers are pretty much done. Uh, got the turnouts or the uh, bullhorns uh, done, trimmed up. They just need welded. Um, so those are pretty even. Um, a little, little like I talked about, it's a little tough to get it even on each side. Um, collectors are almost in the same spot, but not exactly. Um, you know, obviously one head's going to be further forward than another, so the bends are. I tried to make them look symmetrical, but they're they're there. They're pretty symmetrical. It's just it's tough. Um, so unless you somehow had an engine block that would have the heads exactly the same, you could use the same bends, but. Even then, we had to move some tubes around the oil filter area. Uh, I don't know if he's going to use the stock oil filter location or use like a clear view type filter. Um, 
but we also have the steering shaft and all that to contend with on the driver's side. So, kind of getting some parts ready. That's the gas pedal we got from Quartermax. Uh, should be pretty decent. Um, this will allow us pretty much mount it wherever we need. Uh, Quartermax and a roll bar. That's our um, Fox body housing. Strange brakes, strange uh, ultra case, third member, strange brakes, all the good stuff, some of the tin. So it's getting there. There's just a lot of little details. Uh, like I was talking about before with us doing, seeming like we work on the shop car a lot. Um, when you get down to the stages that we're in with Mike's car and this S10, there's just a lot of little stuff that takes a while. I always tell customers that the first 40 or 50 hours we work on something, and if it's a cage, cage work, it's gonna go by quick. The cage stuff is by far the quickest stuff that we do. Um, it's when you get down into mounting seats, um, if we have to mount a steering column, um, all this back extra stuff, like we had to trim a little of the floor to do um, motor plates. So it's, it's just time consuming. The, it's the little stuff that's time consuming and if you've taken your car to a shop or you own a shop or whatever, you kind of know that. Um, just how it is there's a lot of little little time little stuff that uh it just takes a lot of time uh like mark got these mounted um obviously they still need trim we get these cut extra long but um like making all these tabs to support that um there's even one in the back it's got a little support tab back there i don't know if you can see it or not but there's we don't that's all handmade we don't have a plasma table here where we can just knock stuff out real quick like to have it but the shop where we're at doesn't have three phase power so we're stuck with single phase um, it's kind of in the works to get another shop you know if we keep where we're at keep on trucking through um, we're just running out of space again I know we just built this one and you guys haven't even seen you guys didn't even see the part before, um, you know, when we were working out at just this area. So we're, uh, yeah, we're just out of room. It's, uh, I think anyone that's built a shop knows that when you build it, you should always build it, build it bigger and it's becoming the case. So today I'm going to be working on the rear end housing, getting the four link bars, maybe hanging it, um, getting the shock tabs done. And then this week I got seat mounted that still needs a back seat brace. I'll probably do that today. And then I believe I'm going to start cutting some of this front stuff. I got a K member from Racecraft coming. Toby said it shipped out yesterday, so it should be here Monday or Tuesday and hopefully get a tube front somewhat done um got a front end for it got a hood for it so i kind of have a short list of stuff i want to get done this weekend I made it yesterday um so just a lot of little stuff uh like like i said the cage stuff goes quick and it's a little stuff that takes a lot of time um that car when we're done with it probably have when it's driving probably have seven eight hundred hours in it which if we're gonna make rocky mountain race week it's a lot of it's a lot of hours um and like i said all of us that work here have families you know girlfriends wives kids so getting time to work on it um it's a little bit of a struggle so it is what it is we uh you know during the week and like the past couple weeks i haven't been filming as much just because we've been trying to get um been trying to get shop customer cars done uh we're already booking for next winter so i we just talked to a customer about doing a build in august and then we got another customer that's um, doing a 25 fire 25 3 update in november so it's uh it's wild so we're trying to plug through stuff um we're just we're just always at a six month 
you know, backlog, which is, it's tough. We're kind of out of room here, but I don't want to take on any more cars, even if we did have room. It's just, you know, it's a little details. It's the big builds that take a while. But we, uh, and you guys know that we did the, uh, we're doing the welded chassis for the Fox bodies. So trying to develop some parts for that. Um, trying to get the inventory. We still need to do a wall for that. We had a shelf here and every time I walk by it, it bothers me that there's no wall up. So <laughs> a little ADD distraction for today, but it bothers me every time I walk over here. So trying to get inventory kind of in check. Um, it's a that's an ongoing struggle goal to get it i don't know somewhat organized um with having more products on the website we uh need to keep more things in stock so um kind of letting gavin run with that so he's got everything labeled we just got a label maker to hopefully help speed up some stuff but uh there's a car right there i know i can't really show it but um once that one's gone, I think this will be more of a, you know, shipping, receiving type area, part storage, stuff like that. So, um, obviously we got more cage kits going out. I think that's a S10, first gen S10, second gen S10, one of those. Uh, that one is a 25-2 uh, Fox body chassis with a bunch of extra tubes that he wanted. Um, him and his buddy went in, so he'd save on shipping. A little extra, a little bigger pallet, but not a huge deal. And that one is another 25.3 uh, Fox Bite chassis. So, yeah, Gavin's been killing it on those. He uh, kind of took it upon himself, and he's been doing really well. We've had no issues, issues with him getting anything out. Um, you know, I don't really have to worry about it. He can kind of just rock and roll on it and knock it out um and then we have two 25 two chassis both with a back half to build for fox bodies uh the welded chassis so um this is the next one that's coming in we uh gonna put our jig car up on here and uh floor structures welded for it um so pretty much we're gonna put the car up here put the floor in and rock and roll on it, and then pull our shell like we showed before um so we're pretty busy um it's like i said it, i know i said it before but even though it looks like we're not working on customer cars or you know anything else other than a shop car we are it's just it's easier to film and it's easier to make content when you're you know kind of on the weekends hanging out it's not you know have to bust ass on it and get it done as fast as possible um shop car we can kind of you know take our time kind of stand around video do whatever we still get stuff done but uh yeah you guys get it you guys understand it's just easier um so yeah today i'll uh hopefully get some stuff done maybe uh set you guys up and we can uh y'all can watch me build some four link bars all right so i got the uh it's kind of gonna show you guys what uh, line in the rear end what it uh kind of what it takes usually this is done on a jig uh, but this jig's right here and we needed it because we have a car that's coming in after the s10 that is going to be going up on that um so and then that one's going to you know just be our welded chassis jig so kind of doing this the uh i guess i don't know old school way it's a little bit more difficult because normally we can set that tire up on the jig kind of at the right height the bottom of the rocker sits right here so um usually we have like a two by four some two by four piece of metal um to set ride height those aren't exactly right height of each car so um usually have to adjust it a little but a little easier to set a rear end housing when <laughs> kind of have some reference points i guess on a chassis jig <laughs> there's just right now i'm making marks on the floor so kind of I guess the old school way. So I don't know if you saw in the video I just did, but I had that tire up in there. Um, kind of got where I wanted ride height to be. And then if this thing stops swinging, I have a laser on the other side. Um, 
I marked on each side where I wanted that tire to sit, um, had the housing up there, and then I measured forward to the number one bar um, back. So this is exactly the center of the wheel. I'm going to get the housing back up in there so it will be ready and I can measure for forming bars. I'm going to make a correction on my last video. It is way easier to do this on a jig. Because we have, so we have specific fixtures to hold a rear end housing. Um, this one's to hold the back bar on the chassis back here. So we do have um, jigs that hold the rear end housing where they need to. So this is way easier. Should have done them on the jig, but you know, it's just how it goes. Um, we needed the jig to be open so when that car's ready, it can go on it. We don't have to wait. Like I said. Customer cars come first, so um, yeah, so it's just that's how it is. So, we're doing this the old school way, it just kind of sucks. It's uh, a lot more time consuming when we could just you know have the housing sitting in there, it's already squared up, everything's square, ready to go. This, I'm uh, <laughs> dropping plumb bobs off the housing. Um, like I said, I already got the wheel centered up. The this is the mark for the center of the wheel opening, um, at least where the wheel, where I want the tire to sit. Um, so I made lines all the way across and then I'm dropping plumb bobs off this side cause I can't see cause the jack stands of the laser. Um, the other side you can line up with the laser. So I think to the back of the number one bar is uh 28 and a quarter, 28 and a half. Um, so that gives me where I want this to sit. So now that I've got all these marked out, I am going to hang this plumb bob because I'm going to be moving the laser here in a second. Let's see here. Let's see if I can do this with Get you guys right there. So the cords are not tangled. I'm going to hang this. Of course, my line's fraying because we use these so often. So that's where I want that to sit. So these are gonna stay on the jig, or not on the jig, on the housing. And then I am going to take this up to the front. You might wonder why we have plywood boards in front of these. It's so we can put the laser in there. It makes it a lot easier. So I'm gonna line this up. I got some marks here. I got marks on number one bar. I got marks all the way in the back where it needs to sit. Line this. Takes a little finesse to get these lined up. I know you can probably see the laser moving around. I'm trying to get this centered to get it straight down the chassis. All right, so I got that pretty well set. So I do have a plate. On the rear end housing, uh, to Mittler Brothers, it came with their, you know, rear nearing kit, whatever. And, uh, it's just a plate, it has pinion center, so you set it on here, I just have it kind of loosely on there, just bolt on the bottom. It's uh, set on there, so that's where I want the center, where I want the pinion to sit, because as the center of the chassis. That makes sense, so um, I'm going to get this centered up, and uh, yeah, you guys can follow along. All right, so now that I got that centered up, I'm uh, kind of happy with that or that sitting. So I went back, realigned this side, that side, so got it back to where I wanted that 28 number. Um, so now I can measure for upper and lower um, four link bars, and then get those made. So we can uh, keep moving forward and uh keep rocking and rolling on this um i don't know you guys probably saw all the metal that still needs trimmed out of these but i wanted to get the chassis somewhat set on here because when you cut out this much of the car um things tend to get a little uh a little loose so um just wanted to get it set that way it's not you know flopping around bending stuff quarters on these are pretty thin um like i said this is 100% easier on the chassis jig, but I'm not going to 
this isn't smoke and mirrors you guys are going to see what i'm working on um it you know it's a shop car um so i'm gonna show you each and every step even if it's not enjoyable not doing it on chassis jig where it's more up in the air and whatever so um you guys see what i see and uh yeah, I'm not going to lie to you guys that this is how we do every car, but this is uh, how we do every car on the ground. <laughs> All right, so got everything laid out. Uh, got my rod ends, jam nuts, the tube ends. Um, got those all figured out. Laid out, screwed in together, cleaned up the threads a little. Um, so I got a couple of them bolted in so I can get some lengths. Um, I'm going to go ahead and run a four link calculator on this just because that has a ton of adjustment. This has a ton of adjustment. And I want to make sure the bar lengths that I make are what I need them to be. So um, I'm going to run through. I have a spreadsheet that I use on the computer. It's uh, pretty basic. I mean, it plots it out, but... I gotta go in. It's nothing fancy, um, but it does exactly what it's supposed to. So I gotta go in, enter all these data points, measure everything, um, you know, put in the wheelbase, tire diameter, rolling radius, center of gravity height, which is kind of a, you know, a guess right now. So I'm gonna go through and do that and I'll kind of show you what I plotted out. All right, so I got the uh, four lane parts cut down. Um, they are inch and three eighths, 095, while a little bigger than this car probably needs, but that way I don't have to make these over again later on down the road if we ever decide to get some power uh, instead of a stock bottom end 5.3. So I'm going to go ahead and get these sanded down, uh, some rosette holes welded in it, and then we should be good. I'm not going to weld them yet. Because I'm going to wait till the motor is in it and then uh, get everything perfectly aligned before I go weld these solid. Um, then we can't, you know, make new ones or whatever. So they're just going to stay tacked together um, for now. And uh, at least they're done and uh, can get shock mounts done today. Um, that way it's kind of, this section is kind of done except for the wishbone. So... Yeah, I'm going to get those uh, drilled, sanded, and then uh, we'll move on. Alright, so as you saw, I got these bars all cleaned up. They had a ton of mill scale on them. My hands are black. Uh, usually they're not that bad, but we get some weird sizes that have a lot of mill scale on it. And this is from Plymouth, so it's a little odd for them. We get our inch and five eighths is usually pretty clean um we don't have to do that much but those were pretty thick meals ago. so clean the table up because it puts off a ton of junk so i'm gonna drill the rosette holes um so what i do i'm gonna set you guys down real quick sorry about that so what i do is i just find center of this so let me check something real quick All right, so these obviously a little different on the lengths here. So I'm gonna make them all the center of this one. This one, you know, if it's back here, it is, you know, it is what it is. So we're gonna shoot for that one, the center of that. So I'm gonna find the center of this, which is about three quarter of an inch. So we're gonna go somewhere around 375. So that's going to be our rosette hole. It's at least, you know, it's centered on here and uh, we can rock and roll with it. Um, so this is kind of what I do. So I take this, these have kind of sharper edges on them. Um, this probably isn't the best practice, but this is a Harbor Freight dial caliper, so I'm not really overly concerned with it. And I just take it and I scrap a line all the way around. 
So that gives me that distance that this was, half of that. So that's easy. And then I'm gonna do the same on the other end, and I'm gonna do the same on all of them. See if I can knock this out real quick. And it's not really that perfect. The holes will still be centered and it'll be fine. Like if we had a mill and I was doing this, I would, uh, you know, I'd find the end, move in 375, you know, drill it out, drill all the way through, spin it, I'm gonna put four holes in it. So I would put one straight through, turn it 90, straight through. But we don't have a mill here, but because like I was saying, we don't have three phase power out here. So we do it this way and it's the same way as with the mill, the mill would just, I don't know if it'd be easier or not because it's still got to set it up but if i was doing a large production run of these i could uh could save some time doing it but we're doing four for one car so it doesn't really matter too much so i'm going to drill bit and then we are going to drill those out all right so i got some holes drilled got a little impatient there at the end just started holding them punching holes and where i'd only put eighth inch holes so that was uh helped out a little bit it's tough to get that aligned perfectly because that clamp's not that good um, the drill is good but me trying to get these from not rocking in there is kind of tough. so it was just taking a lot longer it was a lot quicker once i had the eighth inch holes just go around pop them and be done with it so i'm going to deburr these and then we will probably i was kind of contemplating while i was drilling we'll probably just go ahead and weld them um i don't foresee anything that's going to cause it from cause it not to be okay later on um the rear ends where it should be the only thing that may affect it is where the the driveline angle where the dry shaft is going to come from when we set the motor up it might change it a little but i don't foresee it being a huge issue so we're just gonna go ahead and weld them so what i did on these thought i'd go and i said i did it eighth inch hole eighth inch hole so pre-drilled them uh make sure the other drill bit was going to kind of walk where it needed to um so these are quarter inch holes four on each side you could probably get away with two i just like doing four it's there's not much meat on these when you start getting big threads and smaller tubes there's not much there so the more contact you can have with weld they're not gonna you know this how this end's not gonna pull out or anything so just keep it kind of uh a little stronger um but yeah so i'm going to try to get this burrs out in there and just take a drum sander and run it in there real quick and then we will clean them and go weld them all right, so I know Mark went over some aspects of welding, and I know I've mentioned on it and touched on it a few times, but um, on these, I thought I would go over what I'm using as far as like cup size, tungsten size, um, and the welder that we're using. So these are 095, so they're not a ton thicker than normal 083, so I think I have it set on 125 right now. Um, I don't pulse the pedal much. I probably will on these to try and keep the heat down because there's such a little area and there's so much welding that needs to be done. Um, hopefully I can, you know, not have a massive heat affected zone and whatnot. But these, um, so this is our torch setup. We don't run a water cooler. We don't, um, we don't do a lot of heavy welding where we need it. There's a few times where it'd kind of be nice because it's, you know, the torch is basically smoking and on fire, but it's not. We do that maybe a couple times a year if I'm doing an aluminum tank or something like that. Um, but this is a uh, number nine torch with a pretty small lead. It's a uh, pretty lightweight. It helps when you're in the car, you know, welding over your head keeps the weight down um, use a FUPA 12 ferret cup for 90% of everything we do um, it's a 332nd tungsten 
nothing special. I think it's 2% lanthanated or whatever it is. Um, we use that for everything. I'm sure there's probably a better choice for some things, but that's what we run. That's what we run on pretty much everything. Um, I'm welding on the Dynasty right now. We have that AHP, the Amazon brand welder, and I just welded the floor structure up with the AHP yesterday. Pretty sure there's not many differences between the Dynasty other than a warranty. I, as much as I like the Dynasty, there's uh, the price just doesn't reflect it for me. I don't. I'm not a bleed blue type person. I'll use whatever works the best and. HP welder is pretty killer for the price and I actually prefer some of the aluminum settings on the HP over the Dynasty. Um, I guess it's not the settings, it's the, I don't know, it's just smoother. I don't, I just like using the HP to weld aluminum. I just set it, forget it. Don't have to change settings. Um, that's got a ton of different settings you can play with and I haven't really, I guess, spent the time to learn it. So um, I'm gonna weld these up. We I'm probably gonna use so 45 filler wire because I don't really need a lot of filler. Um, I mean, I guess I need a little. It's got a pretty decent chamfer on it, but I can feed it pretty quick and throw it in there. Um, I don't need to use a 332nd filler rod or anything like that. So on the argon, um, probably 2530 um, CFH. CFM, whatever it is. Um, that's pretty much standard for this cup. With the bigger cups for the stainless, I use probably a little 35-ish. Um, it's the highest I'll probably go. The number six and number eight cups, I'll do a 15, 20. Um, if you flow too much through those, they don't have any, like an internal gas, you know, a screen in there. So comes out really fast and it can actually suck oxygen back into it. So that is what I run for this and that's what I'm gonna run for this. And I'll kinda let you guys uh, watch me do it. I'm probably gonna put it on time lapse and jam out to some music because it's gonna take a little bit and you don't need to be sitting here for 30 minutes listening to me just well. So I'm gonna get to it. Got those welded. Um, welded pretty good. Each time I do these, I always forget how much oil is on the inside of them from the machining process, and they smoke like a freight train. Probably not good to breathe in, but um, we got them done. They are uh, ready to rock and roll. So I am gonna let these cool because they're hot as hell right now. I'm gonna go try and get the shock mounts somewhat situated. Might move the rear end around a little, um, but I think where it's sitting is gonna be good. Um, so they'll end up somewhere here-ish. Um, on our Fox Body chassis, using a stock rear end, they usually end up right here. But because we're using different brackets, they'll end up back here. That's part of the reason why this is here was because of that Fox Body um, location, bolt location. So that's all right. It doesn't really matter. We made these match these so they flow together. They look nice and even. So um, we're going to go ahead and get that situated and ready to probably maybe hang the rear end so it doesn't have to sit on jack stands. That would be awesome. So stay tuned. All right, so got uh, kind of got this mocked up uh, using these quarter max shock brackets. Pretty cooler CNC steel. Um, I didn't. I'm not a huge fan of the aluminum 
shock mounts. Not like this car is going to be heavy or anything, but I just don't, I don't know. Maybe it's personal preference. I just like the steel, even though it adds a little bit of weight, but I'd, I'll take the weight over a, a fatigue of an aluminum piece. So I got the laser set up going through each hole on the shock bracket and then it's casting up on top there so uh, I went ahead and made a bracket out of some RAM board this is what we use for templates um, it's pretty thin uh, I should probably should use cardboard so I can get the thickness right but um, this is this works pretty plenty fine a little notch out for the uh, little crossbar there so I'm going to go ahead and get four of these made, and then we'll bolt it up. All right, so I'm just wrapping up here. Uh, got the shock mounts made. I made some, uh, some I guess, shock replacement bars so it could hang them. Um, still got the jack stands under it, but uh, I got it pretty well rear suspension-wise other than the anti roll bar and the wishbone. Um, it's pretty well set up, so got the shock mount done It's welded in there. I left enough room for if we want to run another hole back there because this one's got a couple different holes for Whatever moving shocks around um, I don't know how much that Difference will make but we can uh, we can play with that later once it's done, but Four link bars are in obviously they're just mocked up and thrown in random holes and whatnot, but uh it's getting there. It's uh, now pretty much just got uh, a lot of tedious stuff. So probably going to come back out here. I still got to trim up like these inner, inner um, quarter areas. Try and get that ready for some tubs. Um, and then on hopefully Monday we'll get um, the Racecraft K-member, all the front end um, composite stuff. That way we can make this more complete um, and I can really set up the four length. Once I get a motor in here, I can uh, align it and everything. So that'll be nice. That'll be a, that'll be a big step. So yeah, so today was pretty productive. Obviously it took way longer than I thought. I thought I'd get more done today, but I got out here at like 9.30 and it's 8.30 now. So took a couple breaks, but it's uh. It's getting there. A lot more to go.